Hello! Uh, we're making Patronus cookies today. Quite excited about that. So, um, there's not a lot of things you need. We're gonna make a very basic cookie dough and then later some icing for it to make them look a bit more ghostly. So, um, Patronuses are all animals. So, we just got a stag here, like Harry's Patronus um, or his dad's Patronus. <laughs> And um, then we've got a hare, like Luna's Patronus, and then we've got a little dachshund, which we don't really know. It could be the terrier that Ron has, but also, you know, any animal can be a Patronus, so you can really just pick and choose whatever you like. Um, so, these are going to be for the cookies, for the dough uh, itself. Uh, let me talk about the tools first. So, we have a whisk here, and a spoon for mixing. And rolling pin that we later use to roll up the dough, make it nice and flat to use the cookie cutters. And uh, you will need a baking tray and baking paper or just like a non-stick baking tray, basically. Okay, so let's get to the ingredients. We've got uh, 250 grams of plain flour. Then um, to mix that up a bit, we have a large pinch of baking powder. We have uh, 65 grams of sugar, 125 grams of soft butter, which we melted down a bit to make it easier to mix, an egg, and then we also have a pinch of salt. And then later, so basically we're gonna make this dough and then put it in the fridge for an hour for it to sort of harden a bit, to make it easier to spread out and sort of cut it into shapes. And then afterwards, we're going to make some icing sugar and use that to make the Patronuses more ghostly. Okay, one more thing for later. When you do the decoration with the icing sugar, that's going to be pure white, obviously. So if you want to give it like a sort of extra kick, we have some blue food coloring. And also some, um, it's just a blue icing tube that you can use to decorate things. So we're gonna get into that later, but pure white is also gonna look amazing because that's very ghostly. Okay. All right, so we are ready to mix the ingredients. It's very simple. You just use the baking powder first, put it into the flour. See, mix that a bit because we want the flour to be mixed with the baking powder so it can rise. And then you just put everything else in. So I'm gonna put the sugar first, and then the egg, pinch of salt, boop. All right, making a mess as always, and the butter. Oh yeah, that is gonna be a nice biscuit base. I'll scrape that out. Okay, let's see that I can get this out of here properly. Ah, all right, let's see. It doesn't really matter that much whether it's like gram butter or less, but we want to get all of that buttery goodness in there. Okay, and now it's just, so in the beginning it's good to whisk quite slowly to try and get everything combined, combined mm -hmm. with the flour and then you can pick up the speed later. It's gonna take a while. Obviously you can also use either spoons. It's gonna take a bit longer with spoons than uh, with whisks. Or you can take um, electric whisks, in which case that's gonna go even faster than what I'm doing right now. And I will just whisk this now and then I'm gonna see you in a bit. So you whisk this mixture until it's smooth, like a smooth dough. And here we are. So I've, we found that the easiest way to actually do this, because it's quite, it's, it's a fairly crumbly biscuit, and the dough will seem very crumbly and not very soft in the beginning. So what we did is we just used the spoon to roughly mix everything and sort of squish it a bit and like try to mix the flour in with the other ingredients. And then the easiest thing, I mean, there's food processes that will do this for you, but the easiest thing was really just to use my hands. And then um, you knead it 
for quite a while and you can see that the color and the texture changed so it's looking a lot more yellowy now and you can see it's kind of you can see the butter sort of coming through so it feels nice and soft and now all you do is wrap it in some foil which we have here and put it in the fridge for an hour which is what we're going to do now so we're back with the dough which has been in the fridge for an hour to cool down a bit let's see what it looks like okay cool so you will find it quite a bit less flexible now because it's been cooled so we are just going to cut this into more manageable pieces i'm gonna do it like this so three pieces should be fine just gonna put the others away for now to the side and I'm gonna start with this one so you'll want to warm it up again a bit in your hand to make it more pliable for rolling it out oh. so I'm just gonna knead it again a bit okay already squashing it a bit and um, we coated our surface with flour so it won't stick, the dough won't stick to it. It's quite, it's quite a normal procedure. I mean, whichever surface you have, you probably want to coat it in flour a bit. You can sieve it on or just rub it on. Um, and the same goes for your rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, that's fine. You can, for example, use um, a glass bottle that you coated a bit of flour and then you can roll that as well. So let me start this. This is looking good so far. So warming it up helped quite a bit. Um, you don't want to make it too thick, the dough. So we get a few, quite a few patronuses out of this. Let me just see. Whoops. So don't want to make it too thin either. So I'm going for a sort of, let's say, this thick. Two, three centimeters then? No, mm. that's not two or three th okay. centimeters. Five centimeters. Uh, like half a centimeter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'm just showing that because you might be thinking in inches and so everyone has different measurements, but it's like, let's say, thinner than your finger anyway. Like half the thickness of a finger. Uh, a finger. Let's just say it like that. I mean, you will see. So this is my flattened dough. You can see it's quite manageable on the surface. And now I'm just gonna put a huge stag into this one. So yeah, looking good. Oh, careful. So some of these might have very thin edges. So you need to be careful that the dough doesn't come out of the shape. We have no space for the dog, do we? Do we? No. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you how to do this. So, I mean, nothing's going to fit together perfectly. So you take the edges off around your shapes that you've just cut and you collect it in a new ball of dough. Let's just see that I don't break anything. Quite careful. There we go. Okay. All right. Ooh. <clears throat> so then, yeah, you, you have to see excuse me that you don't sort of frizz it out too much and now you can take your knife or another flat spatula or something to carefully get it off the surface and put it onto your baking tray there we go that's our first one and there's the hair bam there we go and now you can just repeat this for the rest of your dough, the edges, because as you can see, it's still quite a lot. It's like still half of the ball of dough, but just separate it. Just roll that out again. It's basically flower the surface again. Yeah, let me just see. Yeah, bit of flour. There we go. Just want to get that dog in there as well. Okay. So, for example, now we can do this little guy. Bam. Whoa, it's coming out. That's fine. So, you can join the others. And now this 
it, it's just it's just this process and you keep doing it and you keep taking the rest and make more shapes out of it and then um, you can eventually use your next parts of the dough so you remember I've cut this into three parts and um, this will make about two whole trays so the whole space of your oven is like the size of one tray and then um, the amount of dough we've made right now will produce about two trays so I'm gonna continue doing this now and I'll see you back when a whole tray is done and one more thing while you do this you can already preheat your oven to 180 so it's 180 degrees uh, on the fan heating setting. Celsius. Mm -hmm. Celsius, exactly. Not Fahrenheit or Kelvin, it's Celsius. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, you'll have to Google the equivalent. <laughs> okay, good. See you in a bit then. All right, so we are now ready to put our tray into the oven. Um, everything looks sort of a mishmash. We try to get as many as we could in um, to try and make it. Julia made some lightning bolts out of the leftover dough just to fill up the space a bit and um, we're now going to put it in the oven for about 10 minutes but keeping an eye on the uh, edges because as soon as the edges of these cookies start to go brown they're technically done um, so just maybe keep an eye on it you don't really want them to be dried out or burnt um, so so really just see how your oven works yeah. and how comfortable you are with it um, and if you're using our dough, it should be fine. There shouldn't be too much rise to them or leakage. You know, they, they shouldn't be spreading, so it's fine to put them kind of close together. They still shouldn't be touching. But um, if, if you use your own dough, like another one, then make sure it, it does not spread a lot and doesn't rise a lot because otherwise it won't keep its shape. For instance, if you had a dough that had um, a very buttery base, then um, you probably want to keep the biscuits a little bit further apart just in case they spread out a bit more because obviously when the heat hits it, um, there's going to be a bit more moving parts to it. So yeah, so that's us. All right, here we go. So off to the oven. So this is what our finished biscuits look like. As you can see, they've gone a bit golden in color. The edges are slightly browned, especially the thin ones, but not so much. And um, they're still very hot right now, so we're going to leave them to cool down, which is important because otherwise your icing will just melt over them and then be gone. Um, so yeah, they're looking good. As you can see, they didn't spread very much. There wasn't a lot of rice there, so it's perfect for us to decorate them later. Next, we're gonna make the icing sugar and get that ready for when they are cooled down. Okay, so our biscuits have cooled down, so now is the right moment to make our icing sugar. For that, we just take the 115 grams of icing sugar. So we make the icing, obviously, not the icing sugar. That's just one of the ingredients. We're gonna sieve it in here. Maybe in the bowl, just <laughs> instead of on the oh, side of the bowl. <laughs> oh no, didn't see that from <laughs> here, sorry. <laughs> I mean, more or less, right? It's gonna be fine, maybe I can help it a bit with the whisk. So we'll just push it through. Oh dear, oh well, it didn't lose too much. Just so we don't have too many lumps in there. It should be fine. And then the egg white of one egg put that in and now we will just mix that quite thoroughly to make sure let's see how that binds together to make sure there's not any lumps left or any weird textures this is going to take a few minutes so just however long it takes you just see that it's a smooth kind of texture Let's see, I don't want to spray sugar everywhere. Okay, this is getting better. And you can see it's going to be really white once it really binds. I'm going to do this a little bit more because you can see it's still a bit gloopy. Try to get all the sugar in there. If you find it is too runny, for consistency to put onto something and you want to add more icing sugar then yeah feel free to do that exactly um, and also you can see we, we're not making that much right now so if you want to use more icing sugar just double the recipe and it should be fine 
Okay, and since we want to make some sort of, we're going to put some sort of accents on this uh, with blue food coloring. So we're just going to put a little bit of icing, maybe a few spoonfuls into an extra bowl and then mix that with this blue food coloring that we got here. That's probably fine. I'm just going to put a drop or two in because it's usually quite strong and we don't want it like a dark blue. Just want a fairly light blue. I'm just going to put that on the spoon and then mix it. I'd say drop first. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's fine. So you can see it colors it quite nicely. Patronacy. Patronacy. Just gonna whisk this a bit more, but this is basically done, and so is that. It's a lovely color, actually. So should come out nice for the edges. So you, you'll see in a minute. We're gonna uh, put the icing sugar onto the biscuits, and then we will show you how, how we figured it out. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to show you how we are messing around with decorating. Yeah, it's really however you want your patronus okay. to look. Okay, so first of all, we added a few more tablespoons of icing to this, just to make the texture nicer and a bit, bit thicker. Um, so we judged this to be the right texture because it's nice and it really covers the biscuit. So we're going to do a stag now. You'll see we've got little basting brushes just that you would use in the kitchen for... Yeah. I mean, you can still try to do it with knives or whichever, just spreading it on, but it's really easiest with a brush. Just and you might even find a craft brush, like a paint brush with the smaller finish exactly. would be okay. So as long as it's not dirty, of course, you've got to make sure, because it's going to touch food, that uh, it's going to be unused or very clean. But it, you can see it's quite thick. You can spread it on quite well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you cover the whole biscuit. A little bit more here. And then there's many different ways of decorating these. So we just want a white, white base to make it look more ghostly. Equally, you could also just make them light blue from the beginning, which I think would also look quite ghostly, or even, maybe even light green. Just thought blue was quite nice. Let's see, so that's good. Now we're just gonna put that down here. Let it settle for a second. Yeah. These ones, Doesn't these need ones to be. here is, have kind of solidified a bit more, so I've started on this one just so that you can yeah. get an idea. It goes a little bit um, more solid after a minute. And I'm just, I'm going to show you now, I mean, uh, with these, I'm just trying to get to the edge first, yeah. just to give it some color, and then I'm going to pull it into uh, further into the body of each of them. It depends really on the shapes that you're using or, or what it is. I think that this was just me trying yeah. to see what I could do to make a Patronus. It really is however you feel your Patronus should look. Um, I always think like the edges of it are, are a little bit blue and then, uh, you know, streaking across the body maybe. Um, you know, maybe even it's just pulling this in into a motion equally you could, could also just, use yeah, a knife, use a knife. That, yeah. or a fork for example to get like a swirly effect yeah, exactly. and we put we also put additional icing in here because remember we split that off because before we put more icing in so we put a bit more in here as well yeah so really it's sort of your own take on something i've got a quite a big brush here so it's a little bit more difficult to yeah to pull off uh but yeah equally you could use a toothpick or a knife like julia said just um you know something like this just to, I don't know, add little bits of detail. Yeah. So um, equally, we've got this paint tube. Well, it's not paint, it's uh, sugar, sugar paint that we got from the shop. And you can just draw outlines around your Patronus, like give them eyes or, you know, just generally play around with details. Or and maybe you want to do something like this, which is where you actually make an inner blue on the inside of a like this, I don't know, whatever you want, the stag maybe. You could have the color running from here, which is just like an outline here, which will gloop up into those shapes because the white hasn't settled on this yet. So you're really 
basically adding adding an inner body to this one yeah and, and then the thicker outside, you, yeah yeah and then the outside of it is actually um you know solidified with the white the thicker you make it the longer it's actually gonna take to dry so give it give it a bit of time and a bit of space to do that um and then your biscuits should be done and turn out quite nice we're going to continue this and later show you a few of the favorites the finished ones and i hope you have fun with this it is a bit messy but that's the joy of baking yourself uh so yeah hope you enjoyed this bye so we just want to show you kind of the end result of some of our Patronus uh, cookies. So you can see you can make them detailed, or if you're like me, who's less talented than Julia, uh, I just paint okay. stuff. Um, <laughs> you've got like different colored variations on the blue. So you've nice. got little soft marbled colored on that stag. Yeah, it's nice. Just so you can do a lot of different things and basically combine it. Um, yeah, however you want in different shades of blue or like green for example it's just nice it gives it a sort of ghostly feel yeah and that's it that's how you make uh patronus, patronus <laughs> steaks or, or anything you want cookies uh, so it's yeah. very nice i hope you're having fun with that and uh yeah if you have any other suggestions how we could make patronus cookies um tell us in the comments and yeah. keep a lookout for more harry potter themed baking yeah goodbye bye